if you've ever admired how effortlessly real aircraft float down to the runway, then you already know what a stabilized approach should look like. So today we're going to talk about what the stabilized approach is and how we're going to work on getting one in the simulator. I have a confession to make. My landings tend to be awful. That's not a flare. That's me flying parallel to the ground. But it was a long flight, and I was lazy. So what am I gonna do? Throw out some spoilers, slam it into the ground, add some thrust reverse. It's not really how disgusting the landing looks that matters. It's not about an extremely high rate of descent into the runway, or running out of runway in the case of this mess. The point is, these aren't stabilized approaches. <laughs> they just didn't have a prayer of a chance. So how they go wrong in the end is really not that important. Uh, there's a variety of disasters and, you know, worst come to worst, you crash. But this can all be avoided by performing a stabilized approach, at which point the landing is probably gonna be just about perfect. So what is the stabilized approach? is when you establish and maintain a constant glide path towards a predetermined point on the runway. Now we're gonna break this down into detail, but for now, let's go over the information we're going to need to know before we can even attempt to make a stabilized approach. Our configuration is going to include the flaps being extended to the landing position on time and on schedule for speed the landing gear being extended at the appropriate flap setting, the VREF speed, which on this Zebo 737-800 will be calculated from the FMC. For some of their aircraft, we might use charts to calculate it. The trim will need to be set to hold the aircraft at the desired descent rate without really losing airspeed. And the power will need to be set somewhat hand in hand with the trim to maintain the VREF speed at the desired descent rate. Since we're talking about a constant glide path, that means it's critical we start our descent at the exact time to arrive at our aiming point on the runway. We'll normally get this information from charts such as Navigraph, or in the US you can get some from the FAA, or we can calculate it. Typical glide path is three degrees, which is about three miles traveled for every thousand feet of descent. Now we can go in depth. The first thing we need to do is select an appropriate chart. We're headed to Sky Harbor, runway eight. So here's the chart for the ILS from Navigraph Charts. Using the Avid tab, we're zooming in on the course. You can see our final course will be 78 degrees and the ILS needs to be tuned to 111.75 to pick up the localizer and the glide slope. Moving down on the chart, we can see the descent profile and here is really where we're going to pick up the information we need for our stabilized approach. You'll notice that the waypoint was up. We have a triangular shape over the descent and you can see there it's a pretty consistent line down to the solid runway. I put a red square around the 3000 foot mark because that is the altitude you need to be at to intercept the glide slope. Down at the runway I put a red square around TDZE for touchdown zone, and you can see the altitude will be 1,118 feet. So we're coming down about 2,000 feet or so. The last red square down at the bottom is in the speed chart. You can see the ground speed in knots of 140 equals a glide slope of three degrees with a descent rate of 743 feet per minute. In orange, you'll notice the DME marking the distance we're going to go from was up to the runway and you can see it is 5.8 miles in that's going to be very helpful as we watch our displays to see how far we have to go to the runway 
and to know that that is the point at which we need to begin our descent is 5.8 miles from the ILS. Since a stabilized approach is moving towards a predetermined point on the runway, we need to figure out what point that is. The first recognizable point on the runway is the threshold, which kind of looks like piano keys or a bunch of stripes. Landing prior to the threshold could bring your aircraft down on pavement that is not built to support the weight of a landing aircraft. It might be acceptable for taking off and taxiing, but not for landing. 500 feet after the threshold begins the actual touchdown zone, indicated by three stripes on the left and three stripes on the right. After those three stripes is the point we're looking for, the aiming point. These two large squares are actually the aiming point we want to land on. We can land farther than those, but this is ideally where the wheels will touch down. Should we go farther than the aiming point, we now have double stripes, 500 feet after, and then another one 1,000 feet after. But obviously we're chewing up a lot of runway to be 1,000 feet after the aiming point, which itself was about 1,000 feet past the threshold. And now we're just into desperate measures. The single lines are 1,500 feet past the aiming point and 2,000 feet past the aiming point at the last one, which would make it 3,000 feet from the threshold. Beyond this, you're actually not allowed to land, but quite honestly, did you really need to even get this far to decide you're not going to make it? Now it's time to get set inside the aircraft to figure out how fast we need to be going and what the flap setting should be. This is called the V-Ref. You're going to go into the FMC, click the top left button there, marked init ref. Since we're landing, we're going to get a landing reference page as opposed to a V-Speed page. And from here, we're going to make about two selections, which will set the bugs for us, as well as giving us the references we need to know for the speed for the given flap setting. It's doing this by calculating the speed we need for the weight the aircraft is currently at. You can see options are given for flaps 15, 30, and 40, and the speeds for those. I'm selecting flaps 40 by clicking the fourth key and then the third on the right to fill it. Before we see a decent approach, let's look at some common disasters. This is the way I usually started out back when I first started flight simming. Quite high, and quite fast. You notice we're way over the V-Ref speed. You can see the ILS is indicating wrong. Our vertical speed is over twice what it should be. We've got all these warnings. Look at that nose down angle. No passenger wants to have that. Now here's the funny thing, and this is why I don't really care what people's landing rates usually are. Look how smoothly we can still touch down. Just about zeroed out on that vertical speed. Now granted, we're going to have to throw in the reverse, the spoilers, and the brakes. It's all quite violent and not very safe. But we did actually make it down and we had an okay landing rate. When I decided to try and improve my landings, the next thing I tried doing was coming in low and fast. And you'll notice fast is pretty much the common thread here. Speed is usually the problem. See how the runway looks very flat, almost like we're driving down the highway. We're still way above speed, we're well below the ILS. And yet, same deal, we can get a pretty good neutral touchdown rate. There it is, but look at that speed, was that 170? Whew! Jeez, oh man. So, we've got to burn off that speed now. Again, not safe, imagine this on ice, wet runway. Just absolute garbage. So we need to find a way to practice this that lets us come in stabilized and ready. If you're serious about practicing, you're going to need to fly a pattern. Just completing a flight and then landing is not going to be enough. Pretty much, you can see on the chart, we're at the airport, and you can see on the X-plane map all of those nice little racetracks I've been flying. It's a pretty typical pattern setup. After you take off, you're on the upwind, you'll make a turn for your crosswind, you come back to the downwind, you need to go far enough out, then you turn to base, and then when you turn to final, again, you need to make sure you're far enough out to be actually able to slow down, 
configure the aircraft, capture the glide slope, and make your approach. When should you say this isn't it and go around? Well, let's talk about that. I was able to find on the internet these references that most airlines require stabilized criteria that at 1,000 feet above ground level in instrument meteorological conditions, or at 500 feet above ground level in visual conditions, that the aircraft needs to be fully configured, so gear down, flaps are at their landing position. We can't be more than one dot up or down on the glide slope, and no more than one dot left or right on the localizer. We can't be more than 10 knots over the VREF speed, and we should not be anything underneath the VREF speed. And I didn't match that, so we're going around. Now let's ride along on the inside. This is not the best approach I made in my practices, but I was able to get everything up to display nicely for you. You can see we're a little under 200 knots. We're approaching that final descent that was up. We're at flaps 5 and gear is up. About the time we get to was up, we need to start to transition. So here we go. Flaps 15, the gear is coming down. We need to start slowing down, and we'll be continuing to extend the flaps as the airspeed drops. We can't just stick them out too quickly or we risk overspeeding a flap, which could be quite disastrous. And I will tell you this approach is not terrible, but it's not great, which is why I continued to practice later, although I do actually land this one, I don't go around. Uh, you'll notice there's going to be a lot of throttle revving. I didn't come up with a consistent power setting, and so I'm going to be going from about 30% on the N1 up to 80% and back and forth. But you can see we're within our 10 plus on the VREF of 130. We want to see that descent rate at about 740. There we go, now we're getting closer. As I mess with those power settings, you're going to notice it starts to uh, oscillate sometimes. And here we go, at about this point, we should really be on that final descent. I don't actually see the DME displayed, sorry about that. Or at least I do see a number there, but it's locked at 1.1 for some reason. So here we go, we're fully configured, flaps are at 40. We are on the localizer, so that's good. The glide slope, we're waffling around up and down because I'm just being a little too violent on the power and that's why we're porpoising up and down through the glide slope. Uh, also, my airspeed is fluctuating kind of massively. We got up to about 150, and now we're coming back down. But generally speaking, this isn't the disaster of the two uh, non-examples that I intentionally made awful for you a moment ago with the uh, high and fast and the low and fast. We're relatively in the zone, but it's still not quite perfect. So we want to keep practicing this. And uh, I did continue practicing and I got a substantially better one. Also not on center line, which is a little disappointing. I was too busy messing around with that throttle to actually adjust it. And we're down. So here we finally are. This is the most stabilized approach I've got for you. After about seven different attempts, this has came out the best. So there's our chart. You can see I should be starting at about 3,000, but I'm coming in a bit under that. Despite it, we're still going to manage to pull a constant glide path down to our predetermined touchdown point right on the aiming markers. The only thing that's not quite great here is I've got the littlest bit of float at the end. Um, I don't think I quite cut the throttle at about 10 and 20 fast enough and so we got some ground effect. But regardless, you can see the flaps are coming out now. The gear is already down. If you look on the top corner of the map display, you can see the DME counting off the distance. At this point, uh, 
just trying to get down to our V-Ref, get everything stabilized and trimmed out. It's really the, the magic is in the trim and the power setting, it seems. Once you get those just right, you're pretty much good. So we've got everything sort of annotated there. We're just a little bit over V-Ref, which is perfectly fine. The um, descent rate, we want to stay at about 750, and we're going to get that locked in here in a moment. Flaps are fully set, the gear is down and locked, and you'll notice I am not cycling that power up and down very little if any adjustment on our way in here so uh, as you go to practice if you're a fan of the Zebo 737 quite honestly it takes a long time to start it up there's a lot to set up if all you really need to do is shoot approaches the default 737 by laminar starts up a lot faster and you can just take off and go and so I did a little bit of practicing using the laminar but most of this filming was done using the Zebo mod. Uh, note the pappy lights, two white, two red uh, and you're on glide slope. All white means you're over the glide slope and all red means you're under. The, uh, the tagline is uh, all red you're dead. So I hope you've noticed that we've met the criteria I laid out earlier, and this approach obviously looks a lot better. We're going to come down right on the aiming point, just with a tiny bit of float. If you've noticed on the panel some things are weird, like the course line is wrong, even though we're bugged at the correct course, that's because I captured the video from replay mode. So if you want to improve your landings with stabilized approaches, just remember to practice. Perfect practice makes perfect. Fly a few patterns. Uh, I've made these improvements today, just flying about seven laps myself. We're the Flight Brothers, plan the flight, and fly the plan.